said, Isaiah, I trust you. I'm going to show you what's going to happen 600 years before it happened. And I, because I know that if I show it to you, you're going to write it in the book. He was wounded for our what? Transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And there's a power in that. Because it's been 2,000 years since it's happened, and we believe that it happened even though we didn't see it. The one that Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen, and yet what? Believe. Gonna be, he gave himself as the son of God that he might present the church to himself as God. He did the whole work all by himself. How's it lighting? All right, you say amen. So, so he did the whole work by himself. And that's the blessed thing about it is that God is for us more than we're for ourselves. God's desire is to save us more than we really want to be saved. And so we have all these things going for us. And so what is he telling us to do? Just be faithful to the house of God and obey his word. You didn't get the mic clip, did you? And just obey his word. And once we do that, then we are, we're essentially to make it in. Now the devil's going to do his thing, is that right? Oh yeah, he's going to be on our track doing his thing. But even God takes that and uses that to make us into what he wants us to be. All right, so let us now go to, well, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. Did you plug it into the uh, thing? Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 1 and 2. I don't think we've read this, but if we did, we're going to read it again. Let's read. All right, we're all there. Let's read. Would to God. You could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. Now, his folly, and I think we already read this, but we'll revisit it again. His folly is simply the fact that he had to boast a little bit about the authority that God had given him in the church. Because a lot of the Corinthian saints were challenging the authority of the Apostle Paul, uh, as their pastor and as an apostle. One of the things that they were saying was that Paul needed to get a job living off the saints. Uh, another charge they had against him was that he had no business keeping company with sisters. Now he had a group that traveled with him, a group of about 12 people that were called by Dr. Luke, Paul's company. And I have a tape which I do keep in Bible class Many years ago, uh, Paul, it was called Paul's Company. And he had a group of about 12 people that traveled with him. Now, some people, when they deal with baptism, they like to take 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, where Paul said, God sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Well, he didn't have to baptize. He had 12 people traveling with him that did the baptizing. Just like I don't have to baptize, because we have ministers here. I do that. I can't remember the last time I did a baptism because uh, we have ministers here. So he wasn't saying you don't have to be baptized, but that he uh, did not have to concern himself with that. He had a company to travel with him. And of course, uh, so they challenged his authority and he had to boast a little bit. And, he's, and, he, and of course, he says in, I believe it's in chapter 10, I have become a fool in boasting, but you compelled me. You made me do it. You made me have to uh, boast about the things that God has done for me. Now, it is a fool for, for a person to boast. And we in our day have a lot of people that do a lot of boasting, a lot of bragging. Uh, you know, as I was preaching somewhere, can't remember where it was, I was talking about the show Cribs. You ever seen that show? And you know what that show is all about? A lot of boasting. Come see my nine cars. Come see my... 23,000 square foot house. 
and all those other kinds of things. One pastor just built a 6,000 square foot house that is gated and you can't get in unless the gate, uh, I guess they push a button and the gate rolls back, I don't know. And they say he's talking about building another house, you know. Um, and he likes to boast. Now, he's not boasting because God or the saints has challenged his authority. He just boasting because he's proud. And, of course, I found out that one of our bishops down in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, his church was in foreclosure three different times. And he shelled out over $30,000 to help the bishop get out of foreclosure. And now he's back in foreclosure. So, so, so you know, who, Lord help us. Let me say amen. Lord help us, help us in a mighty way. So, but, so this is what he's talking about. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. Well, he had to play the fool because they were challenging his authority and he had to let him know and give his testimony as to how good God has been to him. Now, verse number two, let's read. For I am jealous over you with what kind of jealousy? Godly jealousy. Now, there's godly jealousy and there's ungodly jealousy. All right? But he is godly jealousy. Now, what is this jealousy? For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a what? Chaste virgin to Christ. Now, this is his jealousy in verse number three. But I fear lest by any means, and that any means indicates that there are a number of means or a number of ways by which this can happen, what he's about to talk about, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind sh should be corrupted from the simplicity that is the steadfastness that is in who? Christ Jesus. That is his fear. That after all the work that he has done, that the enemy will come in, the same enemy that deceived Eve, beguiled her that that same enemy would come and get you in a subtle fashion through subtlety and we know what subtlety is subtlety is something that seems very unassuming and that's one of the devices of satan that he uses he uses subtlety he comes in such a subtle fashion that you don't recognize until it's all over and then you realize that it was the devil the whole time. And this is the reason why he's given us pastors according to his heart and set us up as the watchmen. Because he gives us the vision that we need to see things afar off, to warn the people of God, to prepare them uh, of what's to come. Subtlety in such a subtle fashion. Can we say amen? Now I knew ministers that used to teach that um, when you brothers when you come to church you make sure that your shirts are buttoned up and no one wants to see your hairy chest and, and I've known and watched passes over the years that as time went on they began to give a little bit give a little bit and I saw one pastor walking around uh, showing all his chest on his head. And it was the same pastor that used to teach, you don't do that. But it's subtlety. Things happen in a subtle fashion. I knew one pastor that used to tell the sisters, you sisters, you, uh, you know, because he started letting down standards a little bit, and sisters began to walk around in mini skirts. And he told the sisters, I do not want you walking around in mini skirts. Make sure your dresses are down. Uh, beyond your knees and and I've seen it to where and actually saw the skirts get shorter and he didn't say anything about it he must have liked what he was saying I don't know but subtle things that come in subtlety the devil uses subtlety and we have got to be careful and many times the Holy Ghost will let you know sometimes the Holy Ghost well the Holy Ghost talks to you in, in various ways one manner the Holy Ghost can talk to you is through your reason. 